everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to be starting a swapping my screen time for reading time but we're gonna do it a little different Megan did this concept a couple months ago last month recently and I thought it was a really fun twist and you know would make for something a little bit easier than having a timer going because I'll be honest I'm not good at the timed reading I get burnt out on that pretty fast but I feel like this will be a little bit more approachable I think what Megan did is she instead of reading for the amount of time that she was on her phone she read a page for every time she picked up her phone and I love that so we're gonna embark on that journey and I'm recording the intro early so this won't actually start until tomorrow but you know I'm an early riser and I like to read super early in the morning but I'm not gonna talk on camera super early in the morning so give you a heads up now so you can see what I'm gonna be up to at the crack of dawn so to start off for the first day which is Sunday I have to read 160 pages which is not too shabby that's a great Great starting off point. I am going to be starting with Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. This is the sequel to One Dark Window. I've had this on my TBR for a while. I actually reread One Dark Window not too long ago because I needed to remind myself of what happened and now I need to actually pick up this book before I have forgotten everything that I read. So I'll be reading 160 pages of this tomorrow. I also do have it on audio from the library and that hold is going to be expiring soon-ish. Yeah, I have eight days. This is what we're starting with. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright Hello friends, uh, it's your first car update of this vlog So oh, I got to 160 pages and two twisted crowns and I am liking this more than I liked One Dark Window. I was about to say I like, I'm like i liking it so much more, but I really enjoyed One Dark Window. I gave it four stars. I had a fun time with it. It's uh, like a gothic fantasy with a tarot-based magic system. And it's about this girl, Elspeth, who had this illness as a child and this illness in this kingdom for the people who survive it, it gives them magical powers, but those magical powers are outlawed. So anybody who gets this illness, shows signs of the magic, they're immediately killed by the king. And Elspeth's aunt and her father hid her illness. And so she's just existed and has been hiding the magic from everybody. But part of her magic is their, their tarot based magic system is is on these cards that all have different things on them. Like there's the twin cups, is that what it's called? No, the twin elders. I think there's a cups card and then there's a nightmare card. There's a scythe, there's like a whole bunch. After Els Elspeth survived, her uncle had a nightmare card and she touched it. And now this entity called the Nightmare King it lives in her head and she shares space with the Nightmare King in her head. And so like that's the setup for book one and I really enjoyed it. There's also a romance between Elspeth and like the leader of the King's elite guard. Anyways, it was great. Big fun. I like this more. This one is so fun. The action started off right away. We're getting different points of view. As far as I remember in One Dark Window, I think we get Elspeth's point of view and then we might get Raven's point of view and then I think that was it and in this one we're getting like four people's point of views and I just I love it so much I'm having the best time with it and I can't there's like a, a different romance in here because Elspeth's in like a totally different situation for this book so while we're still getting Elspeth's point of view I don't really know that I would call her the main character 
for this book because we're focused on other people. So there's another romance between two other characters and ugh, I am eating it up. I like it so much. So you saw my b-roll that I went to a coffee shop to get the rest of my chap rest of my pages in this morning. Um, luckily it's my day off so I had I have extra reading time. Um, I'm a little nervous for later this week when I have to read like 200 pages. But that's that's you know a problem for future Emily. But then I also had some store credit at my indie bookstore so I went by and I finally got Mirrored Heavens which is the final book in the whatever this series is called. I can't remember what the series is called. Between Earth and Sky Trilogy. So finally picked up this so maybe I can actually finish this trilogy sometime soon though I do need to either reread Fevered Star or I need to find a spoilery recap of Fevered Star. And then I got book five of Sinister Summer series which is a cute little middle grade series that I have been really loving this year. So that is my little book haul and I'm gonna go home and um, spend time with my family and not read for a while. <laughs> Cause that was a lot of reading uh right out of the gate good morning friends happy monday i just finished working out but i did do a little bit of reading this morning i have to read 194 pages today so wish me luck i read 75 pages ish this morning so i still have quite a bit left to do but i also like actually have to work today so i wanted to make sure i got yeah, my self-care, my workout in, because it's necessary, I'll just put it that way. I'm still really loving this. Again, the romance in here is just top tier. I love it so much. It's just such a good time. And now I'm like officially halfway through. So that is wild that I'm halfway through this book already. And yeah, my arm is really tired because I lifted weights this morning and now the camera feels really, really heavy. So I just wanted to touch base real quick before the day got away from me and wish me luck about getting 194 pages read in one day. Okay, but real quick, I need to show you my shirt. My 40th birthday was over the weekend and um, my dad gave me a shirt that my aunt had given him as like a joke when he, I think, turned 40. And so I now have my very own. Over the hill shirt. <laughs> I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be. Hello, friends. Happy Tuesday. It's technically still morning for like 30 minutes. <laughs> but uh, I have an update. I did hit my 194 pages yesterday. I did it around six ish. So I wasn't pushing it too close and then I stopped reading for the night and I, what did I do? Oh, I watched Sleepless in Seattle with my middle kid. We're uh, slowly working our way through classic rom-coms and so that was next up on the list and that was really fun. Um, but I will say I didn't love Sleepless in Seattle as much on this viewing. I found a lot more things that I didn't like about it rather than just my previous, oh, this movie is so good. So that was kind of a bummer. I hate when I rewatch something and it becomes less enjoyable than it was during previous times, but my kid had a good time watching it. And so, yeah, and it's fun to watch these types of things with them. So today I get a little bit of a break. Today my page count is 135 and I did start reading this morning. How far did I get? 47? I didn't get very much done this morning. It was a little bit of a busier morning than I was anticipating. I think I'm like here-ish. So I read about 40 pages this morning. So I still have, you know, what, 95 pages to go. Um, I'm definitely going to finish One Dark Window. I had to stop listening in the middle of a lot of action this morning so I did not like that. My plan is to pull up reading sprints that Olivia did earlier today. I'm gonna turn the AC on. I'm gonna have lunch. I'm gonna finish this book and then we'll talk about 
what the plan is once I get that done. I have most of the afternoon free because the kids are at my mom's house, which is lovely. I did realize that I made a little bit of an error when I was pulling up these numbers. So my phone on the screen time, it tracks my phone pickups, but I didn't realize it was also counting every time the iPad gets picked up and every time I have an old phone that the kids use for audiobooks and podcasts and it counts every time that one gets picked up. So these numbers are inflated. I don't actually pick up my phone this many times um, and I just figured out where that toggle was I think yesterday to see how much I actually pick up my phone. But I'm just gonna leave the numbers where they are because I already screenshot them and that's what makes it a challenge, she says, right before she has to read 200 pages two days in a row. But that was, that's what makes it a challenge. It'll be, it'll be a fun time. It'll be a time. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I am really nervous about tomorrow when I have to read 222 pages. That'll be a time. But like I said, we'll just, we'll just see what happens. So anyways, I'm going to go finish this book. I'm still loving it. Is it going to be a five star? It might. We'll have to see. I just have to see how this all wraps up and how this action all resolves. All right, I finished it. It was great. I think it's five stars. <laughs> I just thought the pacing on this was so good. It was so fast paced. So much happened. It just clipped along and what made it, it was so compulsively readable. The chapters were relatively short and that also made it really easy to keep going. I loved where Rachel Gillig took the story in this one. She took all the things that I really liked about One Dark Window and just dialed them up a bunch and it was great. I loved the romance in here. I love that we got more perspectives than Elspeth's and I found the other perspectives really valuable. I don't know. I just, I had a great time. I think it just has to be five stars. Like that's just, that's just what needs to happen. So that was great. I do have 57 more pages to read for today. So I'm gonna put this down and then we can talk about what the choices are. Okay. I think my two options going forward are both library books. I have The Brides of High Hill by Niveau. This is book four, five. What is this? This is book five in the Singing Hill Cycle. I do have the audiobook of this as well, but the physical copy is due back at the library very soon. I think in a couple of days. And this is a novella, so it's only 112 pages. So that would be pretty easy to do half of it-ish today and the other half tomorrow morning. So that's a choice. I also have the audiobook for A Tempest of Tea from the library and I really want to read this one. And I think this audiobook is the one that is due back next. And this one is also not too terribly long, 334 pages. I could definitely read some of this tomorrow. So I actually think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start this one, read half today. And then when I after I finish this tomorrow, I will also pick up this. I'm also behind on Witch Hat Atelier, so I have to read volume 10, no, no, numbers. I have to read volume nine, and then we already have 10 and 11 from the library, and I need to catch up because my twins got ahead of me. And I think reading manga will help break up those two, like 200 plus days that I have coming up. So yeah, I think that's the game plan. My lunch was delicious. I went to a sandwich place that I kind of forgot existed in our town. So like I haven't been there in a really long time, but I got a sandwich and it was really good. And then I have cheesecake left over for my birthday. And so I'm very slowly eating a piece of cheesecake. I'm doing sprints with Liv. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna try and go grocery shopping today or if I'm just gonna save it for tomorrow morning. We'll see. I don't really wanna go, but I don't know. But for now, I'll start this and touch base with you probably tomorrow. I know I said I would update you tomorrow, but I'm gonna do it now before I forget all the things. Also, who knows what tomorrow may be like. There may not be time to update you the way I have it planned in my head. So seizing the moment. Also, I have to leave soon to go get my kids. So I read a little over those 57 pages just because 57 pages put me right in the middle of a chapter. And I so I just wanted to finish the chapter. So I'm on page 64. I think Libro FM said I'm like 59% of the way through the book. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not loving this one the way I loved the last one. I really loved 
mammoths at the gate. There was a really, I was going to say fun. It's not fun. But there were themes uh, about grief and just the process of losing someone that was really important to you. And I really connected with that, those themes and that content. And this one is a little bit different. And this one, she is a accompanying a young bride to her suitor's house where she's going to be meeting his family and she has been training her whole life to be a bride like it's been what she's been raised to do and she latches on to Chi in am I saying their name right Claire Chi yeah she latches on to Chi I don't know in a way that I I'm really uncomfortable with and she is doing her bidding and like doing all the things that she asks she, she to do even when it kind of makes Chi uncomfortable. And I, I just, I don't know, it doesn't feel in line with Cleric Chi's character from the previous four books for them to just be going along with everything this young girl or young woman asks her to do. Um, I think there's going to be like a little bit more of a horror element. This one does feel like there's a a sense of foreboding, a sense of dread that there aren't in the other ones. And while I appreciate that Nevo is playing with structure and genre and trying out some different things, <laughs> that's not what I go to this series for. So it's, I'm not enjoying it as much to the point where it's feeling like a three and a half stars right now. And I gave Mammoths at the Gate a five. I've given most of them a five. I think I gave, I don't remember what I gave Empress of Salt and Fortune because I read that five million years ago, but I think I gave When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain a five and Into the Riverlands, I think I gave a four. Anyways, I just expect this series to be a little bit cozier. There's also not a storytelling aspect in this one. And if you haven't read these stories before, our main character, Cleric Chi, is from Singing Hills, which is like a monastery. And Cleric Chi's job, it is to travel around the country and collect stories and tell stories and so storytelling and record keeping through stories is always a big component of these stories and I feel like it's not in this one and I really miss it. Also Almost Brilliant isn't in this one and I didn't think she would be because of how things went in Mammoths at the Gate but I miss her almost as much as Claire Chi does. Those are my thoughts so far. We'll see how I feel when I finish it tomorrow. I'm really scared for tomorrow. Not gonna lie. Like if you follow me on Instagram, I, I, I posted a reel talking about how much I have to read tomorrow. But I'm trying to like come up with a plan so that I don't feel super overwhelmed, but I feel a little overwhelmed. I'm scared, but anyways. Okay, that's your update. I gotta go collect my children and take the youngest to swim. I think we're going to an outdoor concert tonight, but we'll see because it is 95 degrees and I don't know that I want to sit outside when it's 95 degrees. I think I'd rather hide in the AC. My kids also went on an adventure with my mom today, so they went for a hike, they went and played in a river, they've done all sorts of things. They might be too white to do those things, but we'll see. <laughs>
that I really digged, and I can't tell you what it is because this book is so stinking short that any more information is that than that is a spoiler, but it really saved it. So I ended up giving it a 4.25, and I wish the first half had been as strong for me as the last half was, but I really loved the creepy factor in the end, and there were just, yeah, there were some explanations for things that happened in the first half of the book that I didn't love, so... Like I love, anyways, I thought it really well crafted book. I really liked it. So what I figured out is that if I added up the pages I had left today for The Brides of High Hill, plus the number of pages that are in volume nine of Witch Hat Atelier, it was exactly 223 pages, which is how much I need to read for tomorrow. But that's what I'm gonna read for today. So it will take me like one page over my total but that's okay. And then that's not an overwhelming amount of pages to read. I feel like that's much more sustainable, especially because it's like, like I said, it's after three and I'm not going to have much more reading time today. I did finish the Nevo book this morning and then I did my workout and then I went to work and then my best friend came over and hung out at my house for several hours and I made us lunch and we hung out with the kids and like that was really great. So obviously I like and prioritize spending time with her and not reading because that's just how it works. Um, and now I have to like do dishes. Okay, oh, I've done so many dishes. I have to do laundry because I've done a ton of laundry today. And then our meal box subscription arrives. So I have to unpack that and then I have to go pick up my middle kid from dance. Like, and then I have to make dinner. Like you, you get the idea. Like the rest of the afternoon and the evening is gonna be jam packed just with really mundane life things but like very necessary things that I need to do so there's not a ton of reading time but I know I can get into bed tonight and I can read a volume of Witch Hat Atelier before I go to bed like that is very easily attainable for me which I greatly appreciate and that will make tackling this really big number a lot more achievable so I'm very grateful for that Tomorrow, I am going to try to do my best to read as much of A Tempest as Tea as humanly possible, but I do have another volume of Witch Hat Atelier to read, so like if I get to the point where reading 223, 232, I forget what it is exactly, but I'll, I'll update you tomorrow morning about that, but I, I'm glad to know that I have like the Witch Hat Atelier books run about 175 pages. So it's nice to know that I have that as like a Hail Mary <laughs> if I need it. So all that to say, this today is not as scary as I thought it was going to be because I was really scared and I was really intimidated, but um, I just happened to like do the math and it worked out pretty perfectly. So I'm going to go do those things now. Um, the thing I am really loving about this challenge is having... Like, as overwhelming as some of, some of the numbers have been, it's nice to have that set number of pages. And then once I've hit those pages this week, it's like I have permission to do something else. Like, I really struggle normally to balance audiobook reading t and reading time with podcast listening time because I do love podcasts almost as much as I love audiobooks. And sometimes I find that push and pull to be really challenging so it's been nice doing this reading challenge that when I hit whatever the number is for however much the day of the day I have left I feel like I have permission to just listen to my podcast and I don't have to feel guilty that like oh I'm like sometimes the podcasts feel like a guilty pleasure not that I feel bad for it but I feel like sometimes when I choose to listen to a podcast instead of reading that I should just be reading instead but I know, and it's silly. I know it's silly, but that's just, that's my irrational thought sometimes. And so I really like that I just have this guilt-free, unabashed podcast time. I don't know. I know it sounds, it sounds wackadoodle, but that's just how my brain works sometimes. And I, even though I know there's a lot of value, value in the podcasts as well. And I really love all the podcasts I subscribe to. Like they're all very like niche in their subject matter, but I get, I get a lot out of all of them. So it's been really fun to have all that. Not all that because it's not a lot of podcast time, but it's like guilt-free podcast time. Anyways, I've been talking for too long. I need to go do my chores. So...
morning friends. It is Thursday and today's number is 232 pages. <laughs> and I did start a Tempest of Tea this morning and I am currently 97 pages in so not quite halfway but almost and I'm really enjoying this so far. Um, this is YA fantasy. It's got a heist and we're following I think three different POVs as they gather the team to break into the ruler of this world um, to break into that ruler's castle, palace, manor, home, and steal his ledger to prove corruption basically. I mean that's very surface level but that's the story that we've got and yeah I'm having a good time with it and it's really easy to listen to it goes really quickly I am mostly listening to it on audio so far um I could switch to reading it with my eyeballs but I really like the audiobook narrator and so right now I don't know so the goal for today is just to get as far through this book as I can 232 pages would put me at there. So we'll see. I might be able to do it. Today is my busy work day. I have classes in the morning and then classes in the afternoon, but it's also my rest day so I don't have to work out. And my husband's working from home so that I can go and have a little like time to myself in between my morning and afternoon classes. So I'm planning on going, I think, I think I'm going to go to the library and read there, I think, is my plan. It's either that or a coffee shop. We'll see. I haven't made up my mind. But yeah, I'm hopeful that I can accomplish that goal today, even though it's 10 pages more than yesterday. But yesterday gave me some confidence. So I think I can do it. I just remembered. I forgot to tell you. Oops. <laughs> I forgot to tell you about Witch at Atelier. Uh, so this is a manga series and the setup for the whole series is we're following a girl named Coco who is learning to be a witch and it's her and the three other apprentices and the two witches that are their teachers and this series is really fun and different. It can be so cozy and then it can take a turn and be kind of dark. And I tend to like the darker volumes a little bit more than the purely cozy volumes. This one, we are going a little bit darker. They are at this magic festival in a big city and we get some reveals for some nefarious intentions that have been brewing in the background. There are some heavier themes in this one with some content warnings for sexual harassment and gaslighting of the sexual harassment so um, but that's handled really well and there is a content warning and the author says that that part isn't necessary for the plot and so if you want to skip it like the author has what page to go to if you don't want to take in that particular chapter but yeah I like this I gave it four and a half I think which is I guess like the highest rating I've given no, I have one other volume where I've given it a four and a half, but generally this series floats around like a four and a 4.25 for me. So it was fun to read one, a volume that I like so much. Good morning friends. It's Friday. Happy Friday. I did get my 232 pages in yesterday. It took 
all day. I think it was like eight o'clock by the time I finished. So yeah, that was definitely a challenge, especially on such a busy day. And guess what? Today is also going to be real busy. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to do this challenge during like a regular week with lots of stuff going on, but here we are. Today's number is a little bit lower. It's 166, but again, it's a very busy day. I don't know what happened. Well, I, I, I do know what happened. I am um, covering for a coworker today, so I ha I'm going to go teach her classes. I normally do not work on Fridays, but alas, I am working today only for a little bit, and then we are going to a Warrior Cats event at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> so, all fun stuff. Oh, and we're doing laser tag this evening. Anyways, it's a lot. We got a lot going on. I've read 48 pages this morning because I accidentally slept in a little bit. And I just finished doing my workout. And now I got to start eating breakfast and getting ready for work. So, I probably won't read any more those, than those 48 pages. But it was funny. Um, the first maybe... 150 pages of Tempest of Tea, I was like, oh, it's fine. Like, it's not, I'm not super invested. I'm not really interested, but I'm not having a bad time either. Like, it was largely, like, a good time. Um, and then I don't know what happened, but, like, at, <laughs> right after the 160-page mark, all of a sudden I am in it. I am invested. Now I care. Now I want, like, them to succeed. Now I am totally into the romances that are going on in this book and I've just been sucked in. I don't know why it took me like 150, 160 pages, but now I'm in it. So no <laughs> anyways, so um, I think I mentioned this is a heist book. We are following three different characters. We are following Arthi who and her brother Jin who own a tea shop in the city and their tea shop doubles as like a it's like a regular tea shop for regular people and then at night it's like a blood tea shop for vampires which is very much not allowed. It's not like legal for vampires to drink blood. Um, and so there's and then we're also following Flick who is the daughter of a noble woman and um, Flick is also a forger and so those three plus two other characters join together to steal the ledger of the leader of this city. So anyways, it is this book is action packed. Like if you want a book that is just like bam, 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 right away, this is a great pick. I am really struck also by how different this feels than We Hunt the Stars, We Hunt the Flame, whatever her debut is called. And I've only read the first book. I haven't read the second book in that duology yet, but yeah, whatever her debut is called, like tonally, they are just so different and it makes it so fun to read. And yeah, I'm just having a great time. And I hope I can finish this today because I don't have that much left. And I want to find out what happens. Book one is We Hunt the Flame. Okay. There you go. So wish me luck as I try to read the 166 pages. And I took my hair down from my ponytail too soon. I'm still sweaty. Okay. I'm going to go. Get ready for the day. just woke up and I definitely failed at reaching my goal yesterday. So sad for me. I did not anticipate how busy yesterday would be. Um, the Warrior Cats event was really fun. They did such a good job organizing it and executing it. There's so much for the kids to do. It was really fun, but we were there for almost two hours. So, um, and the traffic was pretty gnarly getting, um, out of that area where that Barnes and Noble is, which I, like, it can be kind of gnarly in that way. Anyways, I just, we were, and then in the car longer and then, yeah, 
it was just, it was a busy day and some of it was really good and some of it was really not good. So I like fell 40 pages shy of my reading goal just because we were out of the house for so long. And then, um, my kids just needed more attention yesterday because they just did. <laughs> just how it goes. So what I ended up doing yesterday is I did end up fin finishing The Tempest of Tea. I gave it four and a half stars. I really, really liked it. And the ending is such a bitch. It's such a cliffhanger. So I'm really excited. Where does this, should this go here? I'm really excited for book two. Yeah, I ended up really loving all the characters. There were some reveals that maybe I should have seen coming, but I definitely did not see coming. And so... Like they were really exciting and I just had a really great time with this once I got over my weird disconnect I had at the beginning. So in my head for yesterday we were gonna go to the Warrior Crest event and then we were gonna come home and then we were gonna go do our other thing. But because the event took longer and the traffic was bad we just went straight to the other thing. So thank goodness I bought a book at Barnes Noble otherwise I would have had nothing to read the other thing because I didn't bring my book with me because I didn't anticipate needing to. <laughs> so I ended up buying Trust at Barnes & Noble by Hernan Diaz, which I have seen floating around. I've been eyeballing it basically since it won the Pulitzer. I just keep looking at it. I keep picking it up in bookstores and putting it back down. I keep like looking at it on like bookshop.org, putting it in my cart, deleting it, you know, moving on. And so I decided to finally just buy the dang thing. Um, and since I didn't have anything else to read, or anything at all to read, um, I read 12 pages of this as well yesterday. I don't know if this is going to be like my new current read. I don't know if I'm ready for it, but I found the first little part I read to be interesting. And then I... When I got in bed last night, I read eight pages of The Pomegranate Gate, which this is from my TBR jar for this month. And this is um, supposed to be a like historical fantasy, kind of, based on Jewish folklore. Um, I've heard really good things about it from a few people, and I've had this arc for forever, so I'm going to give it a try. I, do, I cannot find an audiobook for this, though, so... Mm, wish me luck. Uh, and again, I don't know if this is what I'm going to end up picking up, but that's what I picked up last night. Um, I did sleep in this morning. Oh, so, wait, back up. I, so I have 40 pages left over. So I'm going to roll those over into today. I was supposed to read 140 pages on this last, this is the last day, by the way. Oh my gosh, this is getting so chaotic. Okay. I have 40 pages left over from yesterday that I'm going to roll over to two, the 140 that I have to read today. So I'm going to try to read 180 today. Today's also the last day of this little challenge. And say it with me now. It's going to be a busy day. I have to work again. It's my last day of work. And then I get finally get a day off. Whew, but um, I have to work this morning and then I promised my youngest I would take them swimming so that's kind of what we've got going today and I slept in and I don't really feel like reading right now so that's kind of a bummer and I don't know what I'm gonna read like I don't do I want to read this I don't know do I want to read this I don't know I don't know what I want to read so I'm gonna kind of poke around Ideally, I would pick something that's already on my July t TBR. That would be smart, because I have not stuck to my TBR at all for this video. Like, everything I've read for this challenge, none of it has been on my TBR. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I will I'll let you know once I figure my life out. Okay, I have to go into work shortly, but I made a decision. <laughs> so I thought I would let you know. Um, if you watched my last few reading vlogs, perhaps this will not be a surprise to you, but I decided to start my reread of volume four, volume four, book four in the Lady Sherlock series. I think I've been reading too much manga. Art of Theft by Sherry Thomas. 
This is book four in the Lady Sherlock series, which is a cozy historical mystery series with a gender swapped Sherlock Holmes. It's one of my favorite comfort reads. I adore it so much. And I'm officially 52 pages into this. So, and funnily enough, when this first came out, this was my least favorite book. Like I remember distinctly reading this for the first time and not liking it very much. And then I've read it two more times since then, and I like it way more now than I did when I first read it. Um, and also, funnily enough, this is another heist book. So <laughs> this one, um, a person from Mrs. Watson's past hires Charlotte and Mrs. Watson to retrieve something that was stolen from her, and or from her family, or just from her. Anyways. And we've been following all these characters, sometimes together. A lot of them are individual. Like they're not all together all the time. And this is the first book where everybody is brought together for this mission. And that has since those are my since those have become my favorite installments of this series is when everybody comes together and is in the same location and is working towards the same goal. And the dynamics are just so much fun. So this is what I picked up. I only have to read was it, 130 pages more. <laughs> Where will that put me? Um, what did I have to read today? 180. That will put me there. Well over halfway through the book. I'm gonna be honest. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a lot of faith in myself, but I haven't had faith in myself for pretty much any of these days and I've done pretty good until yesterday. So we shall see how this goes. Hello friends, it is Sunday and we have officially reached the end of this reading challenge. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I did end up getting my pages last night, but listen, it was, it was tough because I had miscalculated as I'm sure you saw that reflected in my editing. Luckily I went through last night and was doing like a rough edit of my footage that I'd recorded on Thursday and Saturday, no, on Friday and Saturday and I realized how I was off and so I was able to squeeze in an extra 10 pages otherwise I would have failed yesterday because my math was wrong so I did read oh no I've been listening this morning so I'm not oh dear how far was I I think I was 120 pages into this I've, I've been listening to it this morning while I'm doing chores so now I'm not sure where I left off last night I still love it. It's so good. And I just, Charlotte and Ash, Shiz Romance, continues to be my favorite thing in the world. Their banter is so good. The way they relate to each other is so wonderful. The way other people observe them is also so wonderful. Like, it's just, these two are my ride and die for a romance. I just love them so much. They are the best. So this will probably be a five star, if I'm being honest. This whole series is probably gonna be a five star. Well, I did give one four and a half stars already. But anyways, it's a five star series. It's a six star series, I just love it. And then, because I knew I wasn't gonna get 180, 190 pages into this, I ended up reading two volumes of a webcomic that's been published. It was available on Hoopla. So I read volume one and volume two of Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. <sighs> Look, first of all, using that song lyric is fucked up. I don't know if anybody else grew up reading Teddy Bear's Picnic. I'm probably aging myself, but we had this picture book and there's a song that goes with it. And one of the lines is, beneath the trees where nobody sees, they'll hide and seek as long as they please, because that's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. So using that lyric is messed up, first and foremost. Second of all, this, this series, the volumes are only 30 pages, and this is like 
Animal Crossing meets Dexter. So the series is set in a village or a small town called Woodbrook, I think, if I remember correctly. And everybody's an animal. There are all animals. Though this is one of those things where it's like the characters are all animals and they wear clothes and they talk and they walk upright. But then there's also animals animals who like live in the woods and walk the way animals in the real world do. It's a very like Goofy and Pluto are both dogs but aren't treated equally kind of situation. So our main character is Samantha. She's a bear and she owns the hardware store in this small town. But Samantha also occasionally gets the itch to go and kill people. And when she feels that itch, she goes to the big city where she can find an anonymous animal to abduct. But then a serial killer pops up in her town. And so she takes it upon herself to try to solve the mystery of who the serial killer in her town is because she's worried that the police will find out that she's a serial killer in trying to investigate and find out who the serial killer in her town is. It's dark. It is dark. It is violent. It is gory. It looks like it's going to be all cute. It's not. It's not. It is messed up. And I, it was one of those reading experiences where I was like enjoying it, but I felt real uncomfortable about en enjoying it. So I gave both volumes four stars. I'm officially out of Hoopla checkouts for the month, so I won't be able to finish it until August. I think there's three more volumes, but man, that was a time. So there's that. I don't know if I would recommend it, but if anything I said pinged in your brain, like check it out. Let me know what you thought. If you have already read the series, also let me know what you think of it because I haven't really read graphic novel, mon graphic novel horror or manga horror, horror, whoa. I haven't read horror graphic novels or horror, wow, horror manga yet, but this is my first experience. So I'm not sure how I feel about reading horror in a visual medium, but that's what I did. So anyways, we're officially done. I'm so excited my reading can go back to normal, though I am now trying to plot out what I want my next reading challenge to be. I probably won't do one until maybe September, but I always have fun, even if I get overwhelmed. And if I've learned anything from this challenge, I need to stop under underestimating myself because I'm capable of reading a lot if I put my mind to it. So there's that. Um, I hope you enjoyed following along with me on this journey during this very busy week. I'm so happy to not be working today. Ugh the best. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment, oh my god, t tell me all the things. If you, have you read any of the books I read? Do you want to read any of the books I read? Do you like watching these reading challenge videos? Um, what do you think of this format versus the reading for X amount of hours that I was on my phone? Anyways, um, thanks again to Megan for coming up with this twist on this challenge because I thought it was really fun and I really enjoyed it. And if you would like to leave an emoji to let me know you are here, let's do a bear emoji. <laughs> and like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will talk to y'all in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.